Good morning and welcome to Live in a Greenhouse on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is about my journey to design, build, and then live in the first greenhouse enclosed tiny home in the United States. Unlike other videos you may have seen about greenhouse enclosed homes elsewhere in the world that were shot months or even years after those projects were complete, here I show you the reality of what it takes to get to those pretty pictures including some of the mistakes I've made along the way. I've been making videos since before I broke ground in 2021 and had planned this to be the standard end of the month walk around, but something unexpected and wonderful happened over the last week that changed my plan. About 400 new subscribers joined in the last week, which is about 30 times more than normal. If you're one of the new subscribers, drop a comment down below and let me know where you are in the world and how you found out about this channel. This video is for you, and I hope longtime followers will also enjoy this review. Although most viewers are from the United States, there are many from all over the world. Even within the United States, there are great differences across the country, which is one reason I sometimes call out details that I think may be distinct for this area that some of my decisions were based on. For example, my project being the first in the United States where the lending market is based on resale value and comparable sale, I was not able to get a construction loan, so I had to save to be able to build with cash. Once I decided to do this, I went into extreme thrift mode. Even though I'm well compensated by my day job to save housing costs, I sold my house and moved into an eight by eight foot storage room in a friend's building for two years, and then into a 24 foot travel trailer on my property for two years. Every design and construction decision was based on what needed to be done to be able to pass my final move-in inspection and whether I'd have enough money to get Things got cut, like the carport, as construction costs mounted. Everything that got deferred went onto a project list for when I had money for materials and the time to do it, or the money to pay somebody to come back and do it. So come along today for a walk around my site and see where it stands at two years of living in a greenhouse. <music> My property is comprised of two and a half parcels with a public road on the east end. We made two parking spots between the trees without cutting any trees. The area to the left of the green pipe is the septic drain field that can't be built on. I'll have the backhoe move all these rocks to make a barrier to the drain field and remove that green pipe. I'm preparing my permit application to build the carport that will block more of the view from the public road. I'll keep a natural ground cover on the drain field so the deer can enjoy it, but add more wildflower mix. The property slopes east to west, so we used a cut and fill method to level up here for the carport and below for the greenhouse, with a gradual slope around the end of the wall to take the garden cart east to west on the property. This area will turn into garden space with a defined path running around the end of the fence. This is planned as my retirement home, so stairs work for now. But this ramp with a gentle three degree slope is handy for the garden cart now and mobility issues later. didn't have enough concrete to finish this section with the ramp, and it wasn't enough for another truck. It'll be finished with the carport. There's a lot happening underground in this area. Running north-south are water, power, and internet between the greenhouse and trailer, Pipes run east-west from the trailer to the septic tanks, as well as from tanks to the sand filter and onto the drain field, 
as well as conduit with electricity for the pumps. There is literally nowhere on this side of the greenhouse to trench to retrofit air to ground tubes without hitting a major utility. The greenhouse panels are twin walled polycarbonate panels, not glass. They're more like looking through water than glass. The previous owners built this deck that's in pretty good condition except for paint touch up but their trailer was beyond saving, so I brought in this new one. It's actually quite comfortable, except during freezing weather, so I'm keeping it for guests. The entire sand filter area had to be repaired during construction, which ate budget planned for other uses. Temporary boards let me run the garden cart over the peak gravel. The west edge of my property I call the lower lot is the entrance from the private road and parking for when I lived in the trailer. It's about 15 feet lower than the carport level. This is the working end of the property and greenhouse where materials like manure, wood chips and lumber come in and visitors don't see this part. These sheds were pre-existing. One on the left is okay, but the one on the right needed a full gut, so I'm also replacing the door and adding more windows. This one will be a workroom and tool storage. After another three inches of rain last week, there's about 2,800 gallons even after watering the greenhouse. There's also a lot happening underground on the north side of the greenhouse, with electricity running the entire length of the greenhouse and down to the sheds and septic pumps, and rainwater collection and distribution lines running north-south and east-west between the tanks and greenhouse. There's nowhere to trench on this side either to retrofit air to ground tubes. The greenhouse west end is the food garden. It's a mess until I can get the circulation system back into the pool and finish the beds along the pool south and west sides. This area was raised about four feet to level for the greenhouse, so it's compacted fill. Only the trees are planted in the ground. Everything else is raised beds. Irrigation in the greenhouse is 100% from the rain tanks, and the distribution is installed in all beds except for the peach tree and along the north side of the pool. This Sam Houston peach was selected for its low chill hour requirement and its self-pollinating. It's in this location to provide shade to the pool and house from the afternoon sun. It was planted as a four foot twig during October of 2022. It's now about 14 feet tall. The short green tube by the bridge is the exhaust for the air to ground tubes that run under the pool. The tall green tubes behind the peach tree are the intake for the tubes that run under the food garden. The plan shows where air intake tubes were planned for during the construction that didn't get installed. That was a big mistake. Under this doormat outside the door to the shower is the entrance to the crawl space under the house. This corner is where the pool ladder will go after I can fill the pool to the three foot level and confirm the leak is fixed. I've been using pool water to irrigate for a few weeks, so it's down to about 8 to 10 inches. The temporary air pumps move the water. These have a fraction of the full circulation power when the full system is turned on, but enough that mosquitoes and frogs aren't breathing on the pool, and it doesn't smell. This area is mostly vegetables, herbs, and edible flowers. The light patterns really vary by the time of the year, 
because in winter the sun doesn't rise above the tall trees to the south and it varies by the time of day because even in the summer this corner is shaded by the tall trees by the lower lot. This year I planted per square foot gardening density. This was too dense in this area due to susceptibility to powdery mildew. I thought it was ants decimating the potatoes and violets, but it seems to be pill bugs. But the kohlrabi is still doing well. These tubes are exhaust for the tubes that run under the food carton. The fans are variable speed on temperature control. This shows the breeze when they're running on the slow side. I was really excited for two small watermelons, but they both got blossom rot, which I now learned may be due to too little or irregular watering. Not sure if I'll try watermelon again next year. These purple beds are eight feet long and four feet wide and can be reached from all sides. First time growing beets and working to perfect my pickled beet recipe. Asparagus got a little dry, but the carrots and leeks look good. The tomatoes looked good until this morning started a heavy outbreak of powdery mildew. I staked up the sunflowers, but I think they need a stronger stake for this many stalks. I get lots of questions about how pollinators get into the greenhouse. I can't say for sure, but it's clear that they do, as I often see bees, moths, and butterflies, and I'm getting a pretty good food production this year. The leeks in this bed are doing better than the tall purple bed that I may be able to harvest in September. I'm harvesting bunching onions now. The fennel fell over this week. I thought that was due to lack of water, but now I find that it may be calcium deficiency, so I'll apply fertilizer this week. Now they're really crowding the olive and calamondin. The potting bench was thrown together with scraps and free finds. After using it intensively this year, I have a better idea of the type and location of storage needed. Hopefully I can get to that over the winter. I work from home full time, and this is the start of the ornamental garden, as it's what I can see from the sofa where I sit all day. The lavender, dianthus, and portulaca seem to be recovering from drought, but I pulled the nasturtiums and some of the columbine. The white sage and bay laurel are doing okay. Godesia is going to seed, and I've been collecting calendula seed for next year and to spread outside. First time growing coneflowers and really pleased with their height, color variety, and all around good behavior. Hope to get some seeds from them and we'll definitely try again next year. The sitting area is planned to be like an outdoor room with comfortable seating and a view to the east pond. This has been hampered by wanting to get through a year to determine whether I could use indoor furniture or needed to use outdoor furniture. The corner cabinet will stay as that was built by my grandfather and painted by my grandmother. I've decided to use outdoor furniture and recently bought the love seat. Otherwise, I'm going to shop the after Labor Day sales to see what I can find. This area smells really good from the herbs and lavender. When the pool is filled, the ponds at each end will hold plants with the intent that they filter the water, but that'll have to wait until the rainy season starts. The house is 400 square feet and was designed for one person or a couple and to be able to age in place as long as possible. Everything is on one level with no interior thresholds. Interior dimensions are wheelchair accessible. The lift up table is perfect working or eating height and lets me put work away at the end of the day.
Full-sized appliances in the kitchen and laundry, except the refrigerator is 24 inches wide. Steel counters were one of the best decisions I made. They're actually a cost-effective solution that's slightly more expensive than laminate, but not as much as stone. They were made in two pieces in very short time and quick to install. They don't need sealing, they're easy to clean, and can set a hot pan on them without problem. The windows face east and south, so there's only a short time during the year and day the sun shines on the metal. The skylights face north, so there's never blinding glare from above. The door to the bathroom is closed when there's company, otherwise it's open for the view and airflow through the back of the house. Floors are heated, and extraction fan is on a timer to run 12 hours per day. There's no visible sign of mold on the walls, ceiling, behind the toilet, or in the linens that are stored on top of the dryer, nor does the bath or laundry ever smell musty. The door to the greenhouse is convenient for coming in wet from the pool or dirty from the garden. It also came in handy as a mudroom to suit up during the snow. The bedroom doors are usually open all day and night, except during the heat of the day in summer and the coldest winter nights. Closing the doors to the bathroom and living room help to maintain steady temperatures in those rooms. It's a long story why that's a king-size bed and it's so high but I love being up so high and looking out to the greenhouse in three directions. And there you have it, an introduction for some and walk down memory lane for others on a typical summer Saturday morning. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and check out my blog linked in the description and come back next time for the two-year anniversary of living in a greenhouse.